Hey everybody, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Got a loaded show for you today. We got Gabe Henderson joining us, Vikings Insider. We're going to talk about the Vikings draft. It's days away. It's oh, less than two weeks away. And so we have to talk about who the Vikings are going to draft and what could they do to make the fans happy. But the Minnesota Timberwolves, they're in the playoffs. They're a top three seed. Should be excited. But why are fans a little worried? We'll talk about that and much more coming up on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked On Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota Podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everybody, it's Ron Johnson. This is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I can't wait to break down this uh, Timberwolves Suns matchup. I mean, so many storylines, uh, so many matchups to figure out, but the hardest matchup, we already know Anthony Edwards is going to have the toughest job of them all. Carl Anthony Towns is back. But is that enough? But we also are going to talk about the Minnesota Vikings. There's a lot to talk about. Masters. We're going to do a quick talk about the Masters, too, because there's a question I got for everybody on today's show, even those at home. I want you guys to let me know. Wives, husbands, I'm going to have a question for both of you. So make sure you guys let us know in the chat what you think. On Twitter, we'll put this question out there on Twitter as well, and hopefully Instagram. See what you guys think about this question, because I want to know what everybody's thoughts are, because 3.6 million is a lot of money, and you have a big decision to make, so you'll make that coming up a little bit later in the show. But on today's episode, is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks in bonus bucks guaranteed, win or lose. I mean, come on now. You make one bet, and no matter what happens, so you might as well go ahead and put it down on the Suns to win the first game against. The, sorry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start off negative. I'm not gonna start off negative. Put it on something else though. Go, go with the 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 Nuggets. The Nuggets will win their first game. That was my bonus bet. My bonus bet was what that the Nuggets would cover last year. I did my first bet, and I think they played the Lakers and they covered. So Sam remembers that, and I'm still rolling with house money. Uh, every bet I make. That's why whenever I go to Iowa, Illinois. I love to I love to just jump onto that app and see what else I can put money on. But make sure you visit fanduel.com backslash locked on to get started. As I bring my producer to the show, Sam Extra, I want everybody to know as well. You can find us on uh Amazon Fire and Roku and also 24-7 on YouTube. You can get all of our shows, all of our content. You can get the Vikings, Wolves, Wild, Twins, and of course the Gophers. And now the links. Because they have a new draft pick as well in the first round. Uh, and we know Caitlin Clark is now with the Indiana Fever. Chicago, Cardosa, and they got the Bayou Barbie. So I don't know about points, but in the paint, I mean, if these two make the team, because again, rookies aren't guaranteed to make a team in the WNBA. People forget there's a lot of other players, adults still in this league. And, and so if they both make it, that's that's a that's a dominant duo down low. Um, but as I bring Sam Exerman to the show, Sam, we got to talk about this Wolves, Suns. Now, when we started this, this basketball party off, I think it was like two weeks ago, mm -hmm. this is one of our questions. Who are we all scared to play? Who, who are we not worried about? I was worried about the Suns from the start. I've been worried about the Suns from the start. Sam, you were not. But why? What, what was going on there? <clears throat> yeah, I, I looked at their body of work. And I was not impressed with their consistency. They'd been so up and down all year. They'd been unable to really string anything together. And I figured over a seven-game series, um, the more consistent team would win out. And the Timberwolves have been consistent. They never lost three games in a row all season. But, Ron, I think I was wrong. I think the Suns present some kind of kryptonite to the Superman Timberwolves. And I don't know how they're going to overcome it. Um, it's... It's got to change. It's got to change from what we saw in the regular season because the Suns blew them out three times. And Ron on FanDuel, I'm looking right now, the Suns are favored to win this series despite not having home court 
And after all that work, Ron, all that work the Wolves did, 56 wins, almost a one seed, to now be underdogs in the first round, it's pretty deflating. Yeah, and that's why the fans are negative right now. I, I said it from the start. The only reason I don't like playing the Suns, I didn't want to play the Suns, was because of the, the threat they pose with scores. You got Kevin Durant, who's one of the most like nastiest true bucket getters, just flat out can dribble, can drive, 6'9", wingspan of 7 feet, can shoot over just about everybody. And when he wants to take over a game, he can. You got Devin Booker who is like Vinny Johnson. He can get hot at any moment. He is the microwave, or is now the air fryer, because uh, we don't really use the microwave as much as we use the air fryer. Uh, but but that's the thing. He gets hot quick. There's no, like, you don't have to warm him up. Now, I have seen him get agitated, but it takes a beast to agitate him. We saw the Warriors agitate him a little bit. Maybe Anthony Edwards, and that's why I bring that up with Anthony Edwards. Maybe Anthony Edwards can be the beast that can agitate him to where he 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 forces the game and makes mistakes. And that's where Devin Booker gets in trouble is when he's agitated and he feels like he needs the game needs to come to him. You also have Bradley Beal in there. Bradley Beal is old school. Bradley Beal can give you a solid 15 and 10 every night. Like that's it. And then you had Grayson Allen, who is just a, a baller. Like he's a Duke Hooper. He's a dookie. He comes in. And he just plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. He just got to think in a four-year extension for $79 million. So mm -hmm. clearly he's a value to that team. And that's four guys that can fill the basket up. And that's that's the one thing we all were hoping for with the Timberwolves was like a Grayson Allen type of person to come off the bench. A person that's going to come off the bench and be extremely efficient. Uh, we, we remember how, uh, what's his name, Della Vadova was for LeBron. Uh, we remember... Uh, Caruso when he was with LeBron. Uh, now we saw what was the latest with LeBron? Um, Austin Reeves. Reeves. Like you got to have that additional person to come off the bench for the Pistons. It was Vinny Johnson. He came off the bench when Isaiah and Joe Dumars would sit and he would get it going. Like that's what you need. I mean, you look at the Bulls with Steve Kerr. You got to have somebody. And that's where I'm nervous. That's honestly why I was saying if Cat came off the bench, I wouldn't be mad at it because he comes off the bench as instant solid offense. And also then he can work back into game shape because sitting out rehabbing and then playing an actual game are two different things. I can get on the Stairmaster all day. I can run on the treadmill. I can ride a bike. But when I go play basketball, it's a different type of conditioning because your body never really stops. And that's why Carl Anthony Towns is going to have to work himself back into game shape. I was hoping as the one seed with an easier first round, it's all hands on deck now, Sam. And, and so when you think about this Wolves team and, and what they pose and what they're going to do and how they're going to stop this, this, the, the Suns, and the Edwards is going to be exhausted. And that's the problem because because you, you can't – I don't know if you want to waste him on Kevin Durant. I think Devin Booker is the matchup for him. Kevin Durant is the question now, and, and we'll talk about this tomorrow on the basketball party as well. But Sam, who, like, who off the top of your head, how do you defend Kevin Durant? Because he went to the Warriors and showed everybody, you really can't guard me. Like, how do you guard that? Yeah, it feels like a J Mac assignment to me. Mm -hmm. And I think there needs to be a little bit of rotating on Durant because you can't, you're going to wear out whoever you have on him. Like, right. that's going to be a big assignment. Um, so I think you got to move, you got to cycle people in and out. But I think J Mac gets the bulk of that assignment. I think Edwards goes on him a little bit, um, because he can lock down when he wants to. Right. The key is get it, it, the key is keeping people fresh. Right. Um, I like the Wolves also switching a lot. Like I think that they have so many good defenders that they can switch stuff and and they mm -hmm. can. It's it's not that easy for Durant to get a mismatch when he's right. playing the Wolves, which I I think is good. Um. But J Mac, like if there's a big possession in the fourth quarter, I like J Mac against anybody. I mean, he's so he's he's slim like KD. He's got a little slim reaper to him. So I'm I'm into the the, the J Mac. And if he doesn't score a point, but he shuts down Durant or keeps like holds him to thirty percent shooting, I'm good with that. Yeah, and so when you think about that with with, with uh, McDaniel's, I also like the Nas Reed. You can switch off on that. I think you can switch off on Anthony Edwards with the pick. Uh, the, the the one they want, and this is where I think they're going to go with this. If Mike Conley is on Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal in the two-man, or 
the center. You put Kevin Durant on Rudy Gobert. Um, Kevin Durant on Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think Carl Anthony Towns coming off of surgery can move laterally as well as he used to, or at least, you know, this earlier this season. Um, so I would be, I would, if I'm the Timberwolves, I'm cognizant of that. Who are they trying to get Kevin Durant in the switch with? Because the one thing about the Suns that could be could do well for the Timberwolves, they are like James Harden. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. They are an ISO ball team, like any team, like Luca with the Mavs, with a uh, Kyrie. They're an ISO ball team, and so their offense doesn't move. Like that's why the Nuggets are so good. They move the ball. It's not an ISO ball situation. It's not a dribble to air out the ball and I'm gonna get my shot. But that's where the Timberwolves, if they can play solid defense, keep the guy in front of them, not tr- get into foul trouble, and hope that the Suns ISO ball offense doesn't work because that's what they do they give it to to booker at the top and he's going to work and try to get his shot off they give it to kevin durant at the top he's going to work and try to get his shot off uh bradley bill every once in a while if he gets a mismatch or grayson allen you know he's gonna you know move run pop and then get his shot off but kevin durant and devin booker playing iso ball like Kyrie and luca if they're not on and they're not agreeing with the shot selection like we've seen kevin durant get pissed off when James Harden takes too many shots, when Kyrie would take too many shots, or when Russell Westbrook would take too many shots. Maybe this is the moment. The only time I've never seen Kevin Durant do that was with the Warriors, and maybe because he knew Steph is an absolute bucket. Um, But also the Warriors made sure to keep Kevin Durant happy because he already was unhappy with Draymond Green. But when you think about the iso ball, if the Timberwolves, and you say, like, I think to also, is Nurkic, I think is his name? Nurkic is the big. Yeah. If if I'm the Timberwolves and I go not small ball, but I put like Nas at the five, maybe on Nurkic, I'm running him out to Kevin Durant. Like I'm going to make sure we get the ball out of Durant's hand. And that's what they have to be willing to do sometimes, too, is run somebody out to get the ball out of his hand, rotate underneath to Nurk. Nurkic is not an offensive weapon. He's a he's a he's a bruiser that also I mean, he took a punch from uh, Draymond and got knocked down. So <laughs> clearly he doesn't have a, uh, he has a glass jaw. Not saying go out there, Rudy Gobert, and choke him like Draymond did you, but be physical on him. Uh, Cause we know Nurkic is going to cry. He's going to whine, uh, but it, it, it goes through Kevin Durant or Kevin. Yeah. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. And I think that's the key to this. Uh, one other question, Sam. Yep. Before we get Gabe Henderson into the show, I want to talk about this um, since we'll talk a little bit more about basketball tomorrow on the basketball party. Um, here's the masters. I don't know if you saw the storyline, uh, Scheffler, Scheffler's wife was going into late or pregnant. And there's a chance she was going to go into labor during the masters. And at mm-hmm. the beginning of the masters, like the week leading up to it, they asked him, what are you going to do if your wife goes into labor? Oh, I'm going to leave. It's my first kid. I've already won a major. He's already won. But day three, he's in the lead. Day four, he's in the lead. She's still not in the labor. They asked him, I think, if they were like, hey, what at what point would you feel like you're too far gone? <laughs> and he literally kind of said, and I think because he's a nice guy, and uh, he won a major, but also 3.6 million. I don't care if I already won. 3.6 million? Hey, we can get the baby every diaper he wants. We can get him a car. Like, we will name the baby August. <laughs> Augustine. Like, we can name him, like, after Augusta. Like, like he will be, we can name him Green Jacket. I mean, there was Blanket with Michael Jackson. Scheffler's kid could be named Green Jacket. (laughs) There's a lot of ways to make some NIL for that baby. But I get it. It's your first one. Because the first one is special. You've never seen a baby before. You've never made a baby before. I get it. But you also have police escorts. You have helicopters. You have private jets. Like, she's she's in Atlanta with you, in Georgia. So... To do all of this and to say he would have withdrew, I wonder at what point, like, does he have a chopper? Because there's a, we know there's a lot of land to land a chopper out there at Augusta. So would he have jumped in the chopper? And the, and the, 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 the air, the uh, hospital has a helipad. Now I know it's not for civilians, but I'm pretty sure the hospital would have made an exception for Scotty Scheffler to get a, get in a helicopter. I mean, man, get a medevac. Like, if the medevac's like, you can't just use our helipad, get the medevac to show up. Hey, we need a medevac. We got to get Scotty Scheffler to the hospital so he doesn't miss his first child. Because my my first, my wife was in labor almost like a day. 
because she went into labor the night before she, they made her go back home cause she wasn't dilated enough. And then the next day we went back and then she had the baby like in the afternoon. So I'm like, you have time. Like they don't always just come out. <laughs> like it takes time. Mm. And so if you think about on the 10th hole, cause it kept coming up on the 10th hole, you still up by three, probably takes you an hour, hour and a half to finish. Especially if you're in the lead, you can kind of speed through and like, I mean, I know this is not uh masters worthy, but do the whole like, hey, do you mind if I play through? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'd let him. You got a baby? Like, okay. Cause yeah, like okay. he's teeing off, he he puts real quick because he 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 already birdied three. Uh or sorry, he birdied uh a uh, par three and he walks into the par four. They're still on the tee box. He's like, hey, hey, can I, can I tee off with you guys? Can I, can I just like, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're the leader. Like you guys, I think the guy in front of him was like five under like, dude, I got five shots on you, man. Let me, let me play through my wife's in labor. Um, or does that screw up his game? Cause his wife in labor, you know, like there's so much to it, but Sam really quick before we get to Gabe Henderson, I want to ask you that. What would you have done? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I want to hear Gabe's answer too. We'll have to ask him that he'd recently had a child, but, um, I, I don't know what it's like to live in that world where, th- you know, you can, regularly win 3.6 million but my mind i've had two kids my mind goes kind of like morbidly to well what if something goes wrong true right like true. like like if if everything was perfect you know i would probably if if you could tell me all right it's going to be an easy pregnancy which is hard to, you know hard for easy for us to say right. but it's it's going to go perfectly um relatively fast she's going to be well cared for baby's going to be healthy that's great but I mean, my wife for our first kid, she was super sick. I mean, she was super sick trying to deliver a baby, and um, and that was so hard to for her. And she needed support, like, right. and, and you never know what's going to happen. So I, I think I would have to be there. I think it's just there's just too too much. It's too important, um, too unpredictable. Um, really, like, how many times, Ron, have we had this question, like, of a a, prim- a prominent athlete whose wife is about to go into labor has it ever actually happened where they went into labor and they had to decide i feel like it's never actually happened where no. the t's got got filled fill, uh, or paid off no it happened so this wasn't a big deal back then there was no social media but anthony wright i don't know if you remember the name played quarterback um he was the quarterback for the ravens my third year i think this happened mm-hmm. uh because we had like marcus robinson former uh, Vikings receiver. And also, Marcus Robinson came to the Vikings because of this game. So the game I'm speaking of mm-hmm. got Marcus Robinson like three or four more years in the NFL. He had four touchdowns. Like he Al bundy the game. He had four touchdowns against the Seahawks. Um, some of the most embarrassing ce- team celebrations I've ever been a part of um, because I told him like after his third touchdown, I was like, dude, if you get a fourth, I'm like, you need to do the – and I forgot what it was. It was like the – I don't know if it was the Spider-Man or, or the Superman. I can't remember what I like told him to do, but he kind of was going to do it. And one of our other receivers, Travis Taylor, like thought he was just going to celebrate with him. So he jumps and jumps over the top of Marcus Robinson, <laughs> flips over. And then Marcus Robinson comes up and does like the Superman thing. And it's just, it was super embarrassing as a group of receivers. I was like, we didn't represent team celebrations well there. Um, but Anthony Wright throws for four touchdowns. We win the game against Seattle. It was a Monday night football game. His wife had went into labor. Now, I don't know if they told him or if Billick was like, don't tell him he's on the heater now. Let, 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 let him cook <laughs> and we'll get him there. Because um, after the game, the cops ran into the locker room, which, I mean, everybody knows kind of the Jamal Lewis story. So they're, you know, Ray Lewis, you know, so people are all kind of like, whoa, what are the cops in here for? Like, who did, who did something last night? Um, but they ran in, they told Anthony, right. Hey, your wife's in labor. We're here to take you. And then he had a police escort that, you know, he basically kept his uniform on, you know, his Jersey and, or his uh, pants and super sweaty and nasty, you know, kept his cleats on and everything and like took it off in the car, but he ran, got in the car, had a car, you know, they, he drove, but they police or escorted him to the, to the hospital because his wife had already left in like the third quarter. Um, and, and, yeah. and again, and, and I think it was his first start too, because, uh, Kyle Bowler had got hurt. And so maybe that was part of it too. His wife probably knew like, this is my baby's first start on Monday night football in like years and does and So yeah, he didn't go now. I don't know what number kid that was for him. This was back in like 2005. Uh, I'm not, or 2004, maybe I'm not sure what kid that was for him, but I have seen that, but no, he didn't leave, but I also don't think he knew, um, that she was going into labor. 
Um, also, I think we only had like whatever, 30 minutes left in the game again. But I see what you're saying, though, the, the whole more. But, yeah, I don't think like any big time person that they've talked about that, like, hey, if your wife goes in labor, are you going to go? Um, I don't think it's come other than Anthony Edwards. He did leave in the middle of a basketball game. Right. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So Anthony Edwards, he did. Okay. It. He left in the middle of a game Um, because he was terrible to start the game, which mentally he probably wasn't in the game anyway. So he shouldn't have been there. Like he was like two for 11. So he should have just stayed, you know, should have just went to the air to the hospital. Uh, but yeah, Anthony Edwards, he did. He first kid, he's like, that. I'm out of here. I'm out. And after going two for 11, you know what? You guys finish this up. I made the mess. You clean it up. Um, but that did happen. But we got to get Gabe Henderson in here. Uh, and we'll do that after a word from our sponsors. Before we get to Gabe Henderson, let me tell you about FanDuel that brings us today's show. Playoff time around the corner in the NBA and NHL. Play in tournament starts tonight in the NBA, and you can bet on the Wolves Suns playoff series. If it's if it's going to be a Wolves sweep, you can get that at twelve to one odds. If the Wolves are just going to steamroll the Suns after getting pounded by them all year, you can bet that. You could bet the Suns sweeping the Wolves, and you could probably get a nice price on that too. I think it's plus nine hundred. Uh, you can do that and plenty more at Fanduel. Uh, dot com slash locked on or the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. $150 bucks, win or lose with your first bet. Bet on slap shots, home runs, and slam dunks, all on a safe, secure, easy to use app. What are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on, make your first bet an automatic W. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Now it's time to get Gabe Henderson in the show on the Hanging Ron Johnson segment. I'm um, excited to talk about Gabe because we're both fathers. So I know Sam and I were just talking about the Masters. So we're going to get some of that in there. We're going to talk a little Vikings as well because there's a lot of tweets out there right now about the Vikings. But Gabe Henderson, for those that don't know, which if you don't know, you probably live under a rock in Minnesota. Uh, he's the Vikings Entertainment uh, Vice President of All Communications or Executive Vice President. I mean, he just does it all for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, but also a friend of mine, basketball guy as well so love to talk a little basketball with him we'll talk about uh the WNBA draft as well I'll get some of that in because he has a daughter too but Gabe man appreciate you joining me uh first I got to jump out there man we've been talking about this I've been you know Dan Patrick on our partner uh NBC Tegna uh Peacock I was listening to Dan Patrick and they talked about it and uh they you know the back row boys had jokes for it and everybody's kind of talking about this uh so I, I want to continue this conversation as a father you just had your first kid a year ago. Happy birthday, Gabriella. It's April 16th, uh, Tuesday, and Gabriella is now one. So one year yeah. into her life. Uh, so you're still fresh in it. Um, but when you think about your child's first, you know, the first born, um, first question, I'm going to just throw you into golf because you're a golfer now. You're at the Masters. You know the situation. Four days into it, you're leading. You have a chance to win $3.6 million. Your wife could go into labor if you're the 10th hole, which means you probably have, I mean, you're a pro, so you probably have an hour. You could probably speed it up, you know, if they need, if, you know, if you ask, but you have probably an hour left at the 10th. You're, you get, you got nine holes, eight holes, actually eight holes left. Cause he's at the 10th when this happened. Mm -hmm. If your wife goes in labor, what do you do? Do you leave or do you try to hurry up and finish out and win 3.6 million? Yeah. I feel like there's a, there's a lot of more scenarios you got to weigh, right? Like how, how close is the hospital? Um, how far, like, is the traffic bad? Like, can we get people to move out the way? Um, if that's the case, then yeah, if it's, if, you know, if I can finish it, I, I'm, I'm gonna try my best. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, if it's the first, like, I feel like if it's the first for me, I'm a little bit more, uh, reluctant to play. Like I'm more so trying to get to the hospital because like, I, you know, I've never been through this before. Yeah. Um, like you said before, like today's my daughter's first birthday. So I can kind of like put myself in the, myself in the shoes of where I was last year. And just thinking about it, I wouldn't want to miss that time. But if it was the second kid, like I only got one one child right now, but if it was the second kid, I might like, look, we, we got 3.6 on the line. Like, <laughs> you know, those those hot look, the hospital bills are paid for. Like I can get there in time to be able to hold the baby. Like, you know, for, first one, I feel like the first one, you know, like the first one is, is special because like you right. don't really know what you're doing, you're trying to figure it out. But that second one, man, I'm like, look, hey, you know, she's you know, I'll be there when I get there with this 3.6 million right. uh, before before tax. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. I get what Sheffler was doing. He probably had his uh, his wife on speed dial, just just making sure, like, hey, like you good? Like you, 
And I feel like, you know, that was that was very responsible of him. But for his wife, I feel like she probably would have made it to see her husband win the Masters. Like, that's a that's a moment in his life that he'll never forget. Right. So, uh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because I thought about that, too. I'm like, if she's pregnant, you know, 10 months into this thing, 40 weeks, we know that's what the gestation period for a baby is, 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, She could have been at the Masters waiting as well with a helicopter, like a medevac. And the minute she goes into labor, she just breathes through it, breathe, breathe. And then when he wins, hey, we can't celebrate. Let's get in the chopper. Get the chopper. <laughs> like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, get the chopper. Get um, the chopper. But Sam brought up a good point about like health, uh, sickness, all kinds of stuff. And so that's where I kind of get that because we did have a scary moment with Quinn, our second, where they said they thought she wasn't breathing. And so it was probably the scariest minute. It was a minute. It was only a minute, but it felt like forever. And I'll never yeah. forget just like closing my eyes and praying and just thinking like, I hope nothing's wrong. And uh, thankfully, she was asleep. Um she literally had fell asleep in the middle of the labor, which they had never seen before. And so when a baby sleeps, their heart rate at that age, because it's so small, literally slows down, um, which I didn't know this. When babies sleep, their heart rate slows down, uh, which I guess humans do, but we're bigger. Our hearts are bigger. And so they probably, you know, our pulse is a little bit more. They they thought she wasn't breathing. Like they were like, oh, she's not doing anything. She was asleep, uh, which speaks a lot to Quinn because she came out super chill She's still super chill, like nothing really gets to her. Um, and that girl can sleep. Like if you let her sleep, she will sleep. Uh, but I, I thought about that with Scheffler as well. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. The first baby. But see, I, I married an Olympian and I feel like she would understand a 3.6 even. Um, but yeah, that's tough. I mean, I don't have the baby at Augusta. Like that's that would have been even like get a doctor, get a, get a midwife, uh, sterilize one of the tents. And just have her on like the 18th hole. Like he could be gotta, cut and then the baby gotta, comes and he runs in. Uh yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of scenarios that could have been super dope that would have been movie worthy. <laughs> that's the thing. If if they got people that can manicure the greens that good, they could find <laughs> some nice doctors to deliver a baby. Oh, Augusta. you know it was 50 right. doctors at there. Like <laughs> right. you don't get tickets to I mean, because I know Adam Thielen was there. I've seen so many different pictures from people I know. Yeah um you know i forgot kirk who cousins. else kirk cousins was there like come on now have a baby and let kirk deliver it in atlanta like <laughs> i mean come on the starting quarterback for the falcons helps deliver your baby and then he looks at the mom and says you like that like come on <laughs> <laughs> like that would have been a movie and then cam bynum just comes running by like movie you know like <laughs> <laughs> Just got to set the scene for the <laughs> Scheffler baby one, you know, oh man, come on. But yeah, no, I get it though. Like the first one, that is a difference maker. Like it changes your life. But yeah, two, you're kind of like, yeah, like we were in the hospital with two and it was like, yeah, we just sat back. We were watching TV uh you know hanging out like it was just different the first one i'm like checking on her is everything okay what is this beeping on this machine that second one i'm like yeah that thing's gonna beep all night like we're good uh, <laughs> so but gay the reason i got you here i got i'm glad we got that one out the way uh that question is for sure we want to make sure we get that in the twitter's verse um but gay the minnesota vikings uh one of the things i just saw i saw a tweet meet sauce lambert you know paul meet sauce lambert he's super negative um, like he's mad at Kirk Cousins for leaving, so he's gonna have Kirk jokes all season. He's gonna beat a dead horse. We know that. Um, but he said his this is tweet this morning. The fans would hate this. This is about as bad as it can get. Now, this is in reference to another tweeter who said, Give me Terion Arnold mm. at 11 and give me Bo Nix at 23. That will feed families. What are your thoughts on that? Dude, Terion Arnold is I had a chance to see him in person a couple of times, and he's a guy that just has an R about him. Like when you look at him, he's you know probably only five eleven, six foot, but the way he kind of attacks life is the way he attacks the game of football. Just, just aggressive, and right. while being aggressive, he's a professional. While it, it's, 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 he's one of those guys where I've been around like a select few people where they just give an R about them, have an R about them. AJ Brown is one where I'm like, damn, like this this dude's gonna be special. Mm -hmm. To go back to, to Paul Lambert, meat, meat Sauce's point, I, I do think fans will be a little bit upset if the Vikings 
um, wait until 23 to draft Bo Nix, especially if he's not their guy. I mean, we've, we've right. seen all these reports of, you know, the J.J. McCarthy's of the world, the, the Drake Mays of the world of um, as possible um, landing players for the Vikings in this upcoming year's draft. And when you turn on the film and you look at Bo Nix's film, it's like, well, how does he fit in with the Vikings? So I, I understand uh, what's his name? Uh, Meat Sauce's point there. But still, if you can get two picks in the first round, I think that is a win. That, my, that is, in my opinion, I think that's best case scenario for this Vikings team. I'm not sure how the boards will fall, but just being with Kevin O'Connell in 2019 and seeing how we drafted, you know, God rest his soul, Dwayne Haskins at 15, mm -hmm. then traded back up into the first round to draft Montez Sweat. Like that is best case scenario for any team. So I, I get it. Um, I think Terry on Arnold, I think that 11th overall selection, you will get the best defensive player in the draft because mm -hmm. I think, the first 10 picks would be all offensive guys, but still um, you got to get a quarterback at some point. And I think fans would be mad if that was Bo Nix, but that's the, what the Vikings are. If that's how they got it drawn up. Then can you blame them? We won't really know until, you know, a year or two from now. Right. And and, and the one thing I like about, or not like the one thing I, well, I know I do like, I like about the draft is like, where people are ranked versus who can be a better pro never matches yeah. up. Like right now. And I, and maybe I, I just hate him because he's, he's, he's an Iowa guy. But Cooper DeGene, they have him as the third-ranked cornerback. But then they have Kool-Aid McKinstry after him. I personally saw – now, again, Iowa's defense is really good. So I think Cooper DeGene benefited from having a pass rush and some linebackers like that because they their, – their best weapon was the punt. Like, they would pin you back and then force you to punt. And you look at Kool-Aid McKinstry in the SEC on the other side of Terry on Arnold – they had to go up against dogs week in and week out. Clemson, Alabama, or uh, Georgia. You know, like, that. that's where I look at, like, who actually faced top. Like, I think, you know, Cooper's only shot would have been, like, Marvin Harrison Jr. And yeah. so you, you, it's tough to really say, like, man, these guys are like that. Now, because against the Gophers, did he do well? Yeah. But was the Gophers often stagnant? Heck yes. And so that's why, like, a Terry and Arnold at 11, I could see that. A quarterback at 23. Who knows how this draft's going to go? Because right now, when you look at all the potential guys, they got Marvin Harrison Jr. ranked as the number one uh, player in the draft. We don't know where he's going to go, though. You got Caleb Williams. You got Malik Neighbors. Uh, you got the kid out of Penn State, the offensive tackle. I don't even know how to say his name right, but Fashion, Fashion, uh, mm -hmm. Fashion, uh, Fashion But then you got Fashion Al. You got Drake May. Yeah. You got Jane Daniels. You got Joe Alt out of Notre Dame, another uh, big six, seven, 322 pound uh, offensive tackle. Uh, and then the first defensive back on the board is at eight, which is uh, 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 Quinion Mitchell. And yeah. so when you think about him out of Toledo, again, I go back to the like mid major cornerbacks. Who did they go against? This is the same thing the draft experts are saying too. Like it's not just me. I always wonder that. Like who'd you go against? Um, and then you got some edge rushers. You got Jared Verse out of Florida State and you got Dallas Turner out of Alabama. When you think about the Vikings and, and already seeing what they have, if defense was the pick at 11, do you see them going edge or do you see them going for a cornerback? I think the Vikings have prioritized their free agency dollars to the pass rush, which means that gives them a little bit more flexibility to draft a cornerback pass mm -hmm. cover early on in the draft. I mean, I just look at uh, Terry Aaron Arnold, and he's a guy that when I look at comparisons to guys in the past, he's Xavier Howard, in my opinion. When you look at Xavier mm -hmm. Howard back in 2016, uh, coming out of uh, Baylor, um, similar measurable, 6'1", ran a 4'5". Uh, I think it was like a 1'5", a 10 second. Uh, the 10 second, the first 10 yards of his 40 was 1 second. Five. Like it was like very similar. And both of those guys can play bump and run, which pretty much – fits this Brian Flores, Brian Flores scheme. I mean, granted, Brian Flores did have Xavier Howard when he was the head coach for the Miami Dolphins. So I think that is the best route for the Vikings to go when it comes to the draft on the defensive side of the ball. But, at, you know, Ron, like you can never have enough pass rushers. Right. I mean, if you if you can get another one, if you can get if you can get a guy um, at the interior that can rush the passer or at least have an anchor like a Jerzon Newton or – uh, a Byron Murphy the second, great. But I do think to answer your question, having prioritized pass rushing free agency this offseason, I think the Vikings should go with a corner back when it comes to getting that first defensive guy off the board this year in the draft. Because when you look at where quarterbacks fall, in a perfect world, JJ McCarthy is actually there at in the 20s because right now they're saying he's the 20th ranked prospect. 
But when you look at what teams need, and that's why quarterback this year is probably all these quarterbacks are super happy because they're like, man, it's a lot of us going to go early. So then these other guys who technically would be fourth rounders are going to be second and third rounders. Right. right. Um, And that's what the draft does. Like I remember uh, when you look at receiver, some drafts, the ninth receiver is like second round, third round. Mm -hmm. I was the ninth receiver in my draft. I went fourth round. Like you just, you just Mm -hmm. don't know. We only took three receivers in the first round in 2002. And so I've talked to guys about this before. We have Jordan Reed coming up next week from ESPN. Jordan Reed is going to break some of this down too, but you just don't know. And so the draft is one of those things, which is why people watch it, at least the first hour or two. We have to watch it. I know you have to watch it. I have to watch it because we work it. Um, But when you think about the draft, because I think about last year too, like that was a long night uh, just to get Jordan Addison. Two two years ago, it was even longer. (laughs) What was two years ago? Which one was that? Uh, Louis Louis Cain. We traded back. Oh three. yeah, yeah. But no, I'm just saying, like the night, like because last year we we did those late, you know, podcasts, and then we had to wait for the whole interview of, of Jordan Addison and blah blah. You know, it was just a lot. And this year, it's going to be similar because you have 11 and 23. Who knows what trades you make? Who knows what happens? Um, and then we still got to do the fan interviews. We got to do the, you know, the watch the player interviews, mm-hmm. all this stuff. Like it's, it's going to be one of those nights, but the good thing is hopefully they don't trade out of 11. Cause if they do trade out of 11, I think us bank stadium, people are going to like, you're going to hear the moans. <laughs> like they're going to be like, what, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Um, and so, I mean, you, you talk about people wanting to like go, go boycott or put signs up. I, I could see fans going to the fences of the Vikings facility. Like don't trade 11. Don't trade a lot. Like I could see them standing out there um, if that were to happen. I mean, Baron, if you if, if your guy, like let's say, like let's just throw a hypothetical. Out. Let's say Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams is the guy that the Vikings want. Yeah, if he goes number one overall, then why not trade that eleventh overall pick back to no like, true some capital and true. you know get the quarterback that you want within that that middle range of the first round. True. No, I I totally agree with that. So there's a thing we don't know the quarterback, the exact quarterback that Kevin O'Connell wants. Coaches have an uncanny ability to throw out a bunch of names, make you look at them, make you watch the film on them. (laughs) And it's usually a guy in that group of five, but you don't know. And with the quarterbacks this year, it's all five. So you don't know which one really, like on film, because I just saw Dan Orlovsky say this. He said he's watched Drake May's film again. And he's like, he feels like he's a guy that needs to sit for a year or two. And so a lot of people thought Drake May was an instant come in and start. So if a Drake May falls to the Vikings, Sam Darnold might be the answer for a year. Like, because Kevin O'Connell, and again, people keep forgetting this. Kevin O'Connell got everything he could out of Josh Dobbs. And Josh Dobbs only knew the offense for two weeks or a week. And he got a oh, lot out of this kid. Um, but Josh Dobbs couldn't get away from himself at times. Like, he couldn't make the throw. Like, I went back and watched film. And I talked about that on the show before, like during the season even, and on the post-game show. Um, Josh Dobbs missed some throws. Like as much as we love the pastronaut, there were some easy throw the hitch, throw the drag, throw the shallow, throw the curl. Like take what he's giving you in the offense, and Josh Dobbs couldn't read it. And so there's nothing against that because that's not his game. His game is more, more of a frontside RPO game. He wants to read the front side, and that's it. If you ask him to read the front, then come back. That's Kirk Cousins. That's not Josh Dobbs. And that's why over time it didn't work for Kevin O'Connell. And that's why you saw him go back to Jaron Hall because he's like, I need somebody that can read. Can Bo Nix read? We'll see. Oregon's team is an air raid offense. Can Drake May read? Yeah, I watched him do it against the Gophers. He came back to his fourth read one time and hit a deep post. It was the safety's fault. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just, we're not talking Gophers in North Carolina, though. I'm, I'm over that. I'll let it go. But what were you doing? Like, literally. There was no reason to run up. There's a guy behind you running a deep post. Where are you going? And Drake May hits him for a touchdown. So Drake May can read as well. So when you think about Kevin O'Connell, there clearly is one of these guys that he can get to work for him. When you look at these quarterbacks, Gabe, and, and you talk about Jaden Daniels, uh, what's the kid out of uh, uh, Washington? Always draw. Um, which one, the receiver or the oh, no, Michael the quarterback? Michael the quarterback. Pitts Jr. Michael Pitts Jr. So you got okay. Michael Pitts Jr. You got because that's who Reggie uh, Wilson loves. You got Michael Penix Jr. You got Jaden Daniels. You got Drake May. You got JJ McCarthy. Of those four, is there one that you're like, ah, oh, I really wouldn't take him? Because for me, it was the lefty, and that's only because he's a lefty. 
Like if if, <laughs> if if Mike if Michael Phoenix Jr. was right handed, I probably wouldn't feel that way, which is very that's, wrong of me. That's, that's um, prejudice, Ron. It is prejudice. I'm sorry. Um, but it's like lefty throwing motions. I just like even Matt Liner. Like I just never yeah. liked him. Like I just don't mm-hmm. like the motion. It looks weird to me. Um, the last time I liked the lefty was Boomer Esiason or Steve Young. Like it Mike may be. Vick. Okay, I did like Mike Vick. I, I did okay. like Mike. But see, Mike Vick had an athletic left throw. Mm-hmm. Michael Penix Jr., and maybe it's the rib, because you see his rib cage is huge. Maybe it's the rib yeah. cage. He has a stiff throwing motion to me. Uh, like, I didn't like Tua. Like, I didn't like Tua's motion either. But is the, of those four, is there one of those four where you're like, mm, I would stay away from him? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to just fitting in this offense, I, I think Bo Nix has the least amount of plays on film that match what the Vikings like to do. I believe uh, Bo Nix led the NCAA in passing yards behind the line of scrimmage or throws behind the line of scrimmage, which means uh, the Oregon offense threw a lot of screen passes. We know this is a yep. Vikings team that don't throw a lot of screens. A lot of the passes are downfield, outside of the hash marks, and you got to go through all your progressions to be able to be successful. That's not to say that Bo Nix can't do that. He just wasn't asked to do so when he was in college. I remember going to the Oregon Liberty game, the Fiesta Bowl earlier this year, January 1st, and uh, just watching how Bo Nix played. And he had some some pretty big-time throws, but still, it was one of those things where I'm like, like can, can he make those deep out routes 15 to 20 yards down the field? Can he throw backside hash to the other hash 18 to 16-yard comeback? And I'm not saying he can't do it because I do think he has a strong arm. It was like, why isn't he doing it? Why doesn't his coaches – why don't his coaches allow him to be able – to make some of those throws. So um, that would be the, the the one guy out of those guys that you named that I would say doesn't really fit this KOC offense when you turn on the film. Michael Penix Jr., we know KOC likes to throw the ball down the field. That's what MPJ, that was his bread and butter. He had two first-round receivers. Oh, granted, the Vikings got two first-round receivers and J.J. and Jordan Addison. So a lot of that, I think, would translate. You look at J.J. McCarthy, um, the the play action passing, just the pro style offense. I think that fits what Kevin O'Connell likes to do. Jaden Daniels, just a do it all type of guy. He's my favorite quarterback in this draft. Jaden Daniels, I think he has the highest floor out of mm. the top six guys. Um, but it's just more so trying to figure out can he throw the ball down the middle, through the middle of through the middle of the field, inside of the hashes. I believe he only had sixteen pass attempts inside of the hashes. But when you look at the Vikings offense this past year, they didn't throw the ball many times inside of the hashes. So I, I think that is a, a match made in heaven, in my opinion. This is just my personal opinion. Um, I think he goes number two overall. I don't think the Vikings get him. Uh, but still, if you go back to your main question, Bo Nix is the guy out of those four that I think doesn't have the film that match what the Vikings like to do game in and game out. Because if the Vikings move up, here's the teams that I feel like are most likely to allow this. And it's only because of where they also can pick. The Cardinals, because they have two picks. And the Bears, because they have two first-round picks as well. And so if I'm the Bears, I'm like, look, we're going to pick first. Do we really need this nine? Let's give it to the Vikings. Let's get some more draft, you know, because they can drop back and take something else from the Vikings in 2025. Uh, The Cardinals, if they're set on Kyler Murray, which we don't know, at four, do they really need their quarterback? And so at that point... The Bears are probably taking Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. The Washington Commanders, we don't know what they're going to take. The Patriots faked. They might pump fake us on this J.J. McCarthy. They're acting like they like him, but maybe they don't. If that of those three quarterbacks, if the Cardinals are there and the Cardinals know they don't want a quarterback, that's what the Vikings could pounce and go to four. Because Mm -hmm. I feel like you could still get one of the guys you like. And so, because I don't know if the Patriots is going to be worth it. Um, but you also could get a new coach in Jared Mayo um, to kind of like maybe make a mistake. But again, for Jared Mayo, because, you know, who knows who they want as for quarterback? Maybe they're just saying it and they have this thought in their mind. Like, but also they could be in love with J.J. McCarthy because of the Tom Brady effect. Tom Brady came out of Michigan. J.J. McCarthy came out of Michigan. Sometimes people fall in love with a school. Um, I actually hate certain schools in their positions like Clemson. Not a fan of Clemson defensive backs. As of mm-hmm. late, it just hasn't worked out like I'm not going to like, like Alexander, uh, McKenzie Alexander kind of worked out, but didn't do exactly what we thought we'd get out of him. Um, what's the other kid? Um, didn't Derek Stanley come from, uh, Clemson? No, he's LSU. 
Uh, yeah, you're right. I'm thinking about Andrew Booth Jr. Andrew, Andrew Booth, Booth Jr. Jr. You know, same thing. Like, hasn't done what you thought you'd get out of him. Um, there was Nate another Wiggins one, too. Year. Nate Wiggins this year. Uh, Nate Wiggins is coming out of there. You know, so for me, it's cornerback yeah. out of Clemson, and I'm like, do you do that? For other positions, though, like Michigan, is quarterback the way to go with them now because Tom Brady has mm-hmm. made you feel like that? Maybe that's what the, the Patriots are hoping they'll catch lightning in the bottom. But we spent a lot of time with Gabe Henderson. We're going to get much more from him as this draft goes on. Uh, He and I will be at U.S. Bank Stadium. So for those coming down to the draft party, stop over and say hi. Take a picture. We're very friendly guys. Um, Might have some giveaways for you guys. Who knows? Might be some some, some Miller Lite coolers. Might be some Miller Lite beer koozies, some hats. You never Mm -hmm. know what we might have for you. So make sure you come check us out at the draft party. Uh, We'll be there having hors d'oeuvres. And uh, talking some football. <laughs> but I'm Ron Johnson. That's Gabe Henderson. Coming up next, we have the Daily Three. Three questions. We're going to about 30 seconds each today because we ran long with Gabe. Uh, but we'll do that after word from our sponsors. The show is brought to you today by our new partner, Monopoly Go. Ron, are you competitive? Of you course. Competitive of course. And I am an avid Monopoly fan. Like, I got like three Monopoly apps on my phone. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Monopoly Go has got to become the fourth app because you can oh, I already have it. I already beautiful, have it. beautiful. You got to show your competitive side uh, with Monopoly Go. I'm sure everyone's heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, build up amazing cities, and bring you big money. Best part, messing with your friends. You can charge them rent on iconic properties like Classic Monopoly, but now you can rob their vaults of riches for yourself. And the leaderboards show you who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. So let your competitive side come out, team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. Get in the game, join your friends, download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Sam, you thought I was joking before we get to Daily 3. See? Like, I already had the app. I've stayed up late, late nights when my wife went to sleep playing this game. Like, it's you build a city. It's like a, it's a different spin on Monopoly. It's, it's It took me a while to understand what I was playing. Like, I'm still stuck at a community chess. I stopped there. Um, but it's kind of cool because you can play and then pause. You can build, a, 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 a like, a fortune. And then, yeah, you can, if you create friends, because people will friend you on there, you can steal their riches. <laughs> So it's a it's a different spin on Monopoly. So you got to make sure you guys check that out. I, I enjoy it. It's not like the cl- nothing like the classic, but it's definitely a different spin on this fun. But let's jump into this daily three, Sam. We got three questions, about um, 30 seconds each probably today. Let's take it away. Yeah, a uh, rapid fire today. We got an all football daily three PFFs. Sam Munson projects the Vikings to take not one, But two quarterbacks in the draft. In his mock, he has them taking Drake May in the first and then trading back from 23 and taking Michael Penix in the second round, Ron. How would you feel about that scenario? I mean, it would be fun. It would be fun to talk about. But, like, who has a starter and a backup rookie? Like, two rookies, first and second, Sam Darnold in the room helping them grow. I get it. Um, I feel like that would be doing a little bit too much though, because you need a defensive guy. But it would be a fun, it would be fun. Like we would be the most talked about team on TV that night if they do if they take or that weekend if they take two quarterbacks in the, in the NFL draft. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I don't think it makes sense for for team building. Like you're you're picking <laughs> another quarterback. One of them is guaranteed to be on the bench, so then you right. really get nothing out of that pick. Um, Correct. You just wasted a first round pick on on Zach Wilson. Like, come on. Yep, that's a little that's a little weird. Uh, Number two, what position of the Vikings roster on do you think doesn't require any significant help in the draft? It's all set now. Uh, I would say receiver doesn't need any significant help in the draft. Uh, You got Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, even though Justin Jefferson is not reporting. um, But we knew that was going to happen anytime a, a contract negotiation comes up. Uh, a lot of players stay away just so they don't get hurt and they want to kind of let the team know, hey, I'm serious. I want to try to get something done or give me some type of assurance that I'm not just playing one more year here and I'm done. Because if this is it, then you're renting me and you're not going to get me full time. Uh, but I, I think receiver right now, they're, they're pretty set. Unless they feel like they're not going to get this deal done with Justin Jefferson and we see them go get like Romeo Duze in the first round. Then we really are going to be like, whoa. 
Yeah, that would be jarring. I'm going to I'm going to say safety. I think safety okay. is pretty set. Hitman, Metellus, Bynum. Yeah. Maybe see maybe seen can show you something. Theo Jackson, I like that group a lot. I will Last say the one, one spot, the one spot they could get in safety and we'll talk about this maybe Friday. Uh Tyler Newbin. Tyler Newbin in the second or third, if they can get if they can find a way to get a second or third round pick, if this Tyler Newbin's still there, I would say take him. He could be the predecessor uh to play alongside of uh Cam Bynum. So when Harrison yeah. decides to walk away. The next Winfield from the Gophers. Yep. Safety you. All right, last one, Ron. Uh, I think you talked about this a little bit with Gabe. Which team in the top 10 are you circling that's going to make that trade with the Vikings to get into the top 10 picks? Yeah, I'm looking at the Bears or the Cardinals. Uh, they both already have first-round picks. Bears would have picked before their time to trade, so I could see them being the first easiest. Uh, the Cardinals do have a later first-round pick, so maybe they don't want any of the quarterbacks in the top four. So they're like, look, yep, here you can have it. We'll go get X, Y, and Z, um, and we'll take your 11 um, plus whatever else. Or maybe they really hold the Vikings under the fire and say, if you want this, you got to give us 11 and 23 if you want to come up to four. So see if the Vikings are willing to do it. Or if they just say, hey, we'll give you our 2026 first-round pick uh, or something crazy like that. But, yeah, that's what I'd say. I don't know. Who, who do you see? Cardinals would be mine as well. Let's take all the guesswork out. If you trade with the Bears at nine, you're you're gambling that someone Correct. is going to sneak in front of you. Whether it's the you know the Broncos, probably the biggest threat there with Sean yep. Payton, desperate for a quarterback, get yep. up to number four and eliminate all doubt. Yep, I would say that as well. Well, that's do it for us today. I want to thank Gabe Henderson for joining us on the Ron Johnson Show. I want to thank Sam Ekstrom. I want to thank all the everydayers. Thank you guys that continue to like, share, download, tell a friend, and tell a friend that we're here. I appreciate it. Make sure you find Locked On Sports Minnesota 24-7 on our YouTube stream for your favorite Minnesota sports shows around the clock. It's Vikings, Wild Wolves, Twins, and Gophers, and, of course, Lynx. We didn't get a chance to talk to it about it today, but we'll talk about it Friday. And the Lynx got Alyssa Peely out of Utah. She's a big, strong power forward so that's going to add a little bit of uh you know bravado and maybe the maybe the Timberwolves the Lynx tank and then next year they get uh Paige Beckers with the number one pick but that'll do it for us today I want to thank you guys for joining us again I'm Ron Johnson that's Sam Ekstrom have a great week people